Hi everyone, Alex from La Croix Boards here. Um, wanted to cover a bunch of things um, long overdue on the board. So let's get to it. The board that I have right now is a DSS 50 plus. It has the upgraded um, Sanyo 2700 battery pack. And, but the comments that the subjects that we're gonna cover today apply to uh, both boards, uh, both the DSS 60 and the 50 plus. So going from front to back, I uh, wanted to discuss a couple of quirks about the board, um, things you should know, uh, things you should um, keep in mind as of maintenance, and when you receive your board, uh, things to check out for. So first of all, um, front wheels. The front wheels do not have, well actually all four wheels, don't have any spacers don't have any bearing spacers. So you need to be very careful when torquing the wheels not to torque the um, axle nut too much or you'll crush the bearings. What I recommend doing is simply to tighten the nut until there is no more play in the wheel. So that will have um, the, the effect of not creating any rattle at high speeds. So it's normal that the wheel doesn't uh, spin so much. So that's the first thing. Second thing, the top truck of both the rear and the back truck, we disassemble them um, completely. And the reason for that is that we don't want any lateral play. Going forward on the board, all these screws, uh, they're, they're Phillips and they are in th three parts. So there's the screw, there is a countersink washer, and underneath there is a nylon washer. And you should not torque these too, mu too much as well. Um, we torque them to 0 0.8 Newton meters, each and every one of them. So that's what you, if, if you don't have a, um, a torque wrench, um, we use the Weha torque wrench, which is a very good tool, but you can find some cheaper ones, and I recommend you buy some because all of these screws need to be uh, precisely uh, very tight all the time, or else you might damage the electronics and water might seep in and um, whatnot. It also creates some rattle, which is very bad for the electronics. When they are all tight, there's no rattle because everything is foamed up and in, in a tight uh, foam sandwich. So going at the back of the board, uh, a couple of things to cover here. First of all, belt tension. Um, so the belts should be as loose as possible, like a medium rear stake. And um, as loose as possible, but so that they don't skip on hard acceleration or hard braking. So this is the tension that the board, that we put on the board when it chips out and it gives you an idea of, of the ideal tension. So it, it, it gets, it's a bit trickier to get the appropriate tension on the 16 tooth pulley, which is the smaller of the two pulleys that come with the board, the motor pulleys, uh, simply because there's less surface of contact with the belt, but um, uh, you can play a little with it. It, it shouldn't be too uh, difficult. To adjust the tension of the, um, of the belt, you need to unscrew the four button um, screws that hold the motor and it will slide on the axis of the motor mount and that's how you actually tighten it with a 2.5 millimeter uh, hex, like this one. Some of your boards have a stainless steel um, spacer here that we add, it's a washer actually, that we add in order to um, get the nut further away on the thread of the kingpin in order for um, uh, that nut to be compressing the whole top truck when we torque it. So what does that mean? It means that the, the, um, sometimes the washer that comes with the truck is too thin and even if you torque it, uh, there's still a play, like in this one. There's a play like this, which we don't like at high speeds. It creates rattles and it's just very unpleasant. So what we do is we add a spacer so that nut is further away on the thread of the kingpin. And um, 
what you need to look out for is not to torque it too much. So you can add any spacer on here. We put um, a spacer similar as this one, which is one fourth of an inch. That's the, um, th the center hole. It, it simply needs to be um, aligned and on the spacer. And you need to make sure that the both spacers are really well aligned or else the nut, uh, the, the, uh, the nut will not rest um, flatly on the washer and that will create problems. So when you're tightening it, um, what we found is that to torque it at 4.6 newton meters, is actually the sweet spot where you don't compress it too much so as to compromise the top truck. If you actually do torque it too much, you might uh, break the top truck when you are at speed. So 4.6, and it's not, it's not so much. Um, you don't really need to compress it so much when you're adding these washers. So just to give you an idea, and at 4.6, it doesn't move anymore. So that's the sweet spot. So the rear wheels, um, the quirk is the following. You have on your rear wheels one of four sizes of spacers that determines the space between the pulley and the hub. Uh, and these, the different spacers I, are identified with the um, color sticker that you have. So pink is half an inch. This spacer would be half an inch. Green is 31 64th of an inch, yellow is 7 16th of an inch, and orange is 26 64th of an inch. And the reason why we use these various spacers is to compensate for the imperfectness of um, the imperfections on the rear truck. So the big M8 hole that is used for the brake is not precisely at the same place on each and every truck, which means that when we install our motor mounts, if we always use the same spacer on the wheel, sometimes the wheel would rub on the motor mount. So the reason, that's the reason why we use uh, different spacers on each and every one of your boards. And we use, so, and, and even from left to right on, on the same truck, ideally, um, we would use different spacers sometimes, but for compatibility, so that one of your wheels, uh, uh, you don't end up with one of your wheels rubbing on your trucks, we ship uh, your board with three identical wheel with three identical spacers. And that is why on one side it might not be, uh, the belt alignment might not be exactly as on the other side um, of, your, of your truck. If you wanna play with the wheel alignment, uh, the only thing that you need to do is take off this rear wheel, which I'll demonstrate because it's fairly easy. So it's just like putting the chain on um, a bicycle. You could just pop this off, slide the belt off, and you're good to go. So you would need, if you want to play with the, um, the, the belt alignment, you have about like half a millimeter here of play on um, the axle where the motor pulley sits. So you can actually slide this back and forth without it, the, the important is that it never rubs on the uh, motor mount. So what you need to do is take a two millimeter hex key and unscrew the two grub screws and that will, you'll be able to slide it. And a rule of thumb for each and every screw on, on the board is to heat them up with a heat gun because we use a lot of Permatex blue gel uh, on installation, and uh, the the um, the pulley might have seized on the axle. So if you heat everything up a little, then it will slide right off once you undo these uh, these these um, the tr the the two grub screws. If your board came with um, orange shock blocks in the front, it's simply because we did not have any yellows left in stocks. So what we do is we put some orange ones in front in which we drill a small hole to make them a bit softer, um, pending uh, the receipt of all our yellow shock blocks, at which point we just ship them 
through the mail. So if your board came with orange shock blocks, just be patient and in a few weeks you'll get some yellow shock blocks. But in the meantime, you have some softer orange shock blocks up front. There are two screws on the rotor mount, a small M6 grub screw and the large cap head M8 screw. Um, you should never have to touch these. On those two specific screws, we put some red Loctite, which means that they won't budge unless you heat them up, but you should never have to heat them up. Uh, you should never touch them. One thing I wanted to uh, discuss was um, some design elements behind the wheel and um, how that affects uh, speed wobble at high speed. So the reason why we didn't put any washers between uh, the head of this bolt and the pulley is because the difference in thickness between the spacers actually creates um, an uneven surface and actually makes the wheel wobble at high speed. It's also the reason why we don't put any cap on, on this valve. It's because this additional weight, a rotational weight, actually um, creates a tiny wobble. But most importantly, how you can eliminate almost 90% of the wobble is by doing two things. First of all, is centering this pulley um, on the axis. So it is very difficult to center it specifically on, on the hub. And that's why we provide a 3D file so that you can print a um, 3D print a, a pulley centering jig. Um, that, that will allow you to snap on this, um, this centering pulley, put it on the axle like this, and then screw your five screws to make sure that the pulley is actually perfectly centered on the hub. So that's the first thing. You can do it manually. It just takes a lot of time and kind of precision to do it. It's just easier to do with the centering jig. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is to precisely torque each and every one of these sp uh, five screws in a star pattern at 0 0.55 um, newton meters. That is 0.55 newton meters of torque, which is the minimal amount of torque that you would need in order for um, these screws to be tight. But at the same time, um, by putting this specific amount of pressure, equal pressure on all five of those um, bolts, screws, you ensure that you have the same amount of pressure and that won't create any wobble at high speed as well. So that's the trick. Um, same torque on all of those five screws and torque them uh, in a star pattern with the centering and you'll eliminate 90% of the um, wobble. And when putting back this rear wheel, fairly easy. You simply take your pulley, it's like putting the chain back on a bike, put it on the rear pulley and then you just kind of slide it on like this and just rotate it and after a full revolution you'll be you'll be fine when putting it back on only thing to look for is this wobble um, la lateral play I mean between the wheel on the axle so if you grab the wheel and see how much it can spin as freely as possible without having a play. So now there's a tiny play. Then you just screw it a bit more, make sure there's no play and you're good to go. So you don't need to be playing with the, um, with the motor uh, at all when pulling on, putting on and off your, wheel, your rear wheel. And another um, thing to keep in mind is that your belt might slack after a uh, couple hundred kilometers. So you might need, you might feel some belt skip after a while. So you'll need to adjust slight, slightly the tension. Sometimes not, but if you live in a hotter climate, that might happen. Other thing I wanted to cover is these screws under each shock block. You should make sure that they are always engaged. So just to show you how they're made, so you understand a bit better their function, there is a pin at the end of this screw that actually inserts in the shock block. So the head of this screw actually inserts itself in the shock block and that's what um, prevents the, sho the shock block from popping off when you're carving. So if 
this screw is not um, engaged in the shock block and your shock block is actually just not resting on the top here, there's a risk that it slides out from under the truck. So it's important to always engage this, this screw in the shock block. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks. If ever you want a subject covered on our next tutorial, just please leave your message in the comments and we'll make sure to cover it in our next uh, videos. Thanks.